I really mean a variations on that thing. Thanks to you, I have time to turn. Hi everyone, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is the fifth day, the end of the week and the Friday is, what time is it, quarter to eight and I still have to take videos and all the footage so I can share as much as I can with you but finally, the car is done it just has to be wiped off, cleaned a bit and next week at some point it's going to go home hopefully I will be able to spend time with the client and then record as much footage with him as well as possible. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> um, so you could see from the previous days, uh, if you haven't seen the previous daily updates of this project, then then check out the channel 100% and go to the description. You can you can find links to the playlist as well. But finally, we have a fully active three-way system up front. Uh, rear feel running as differential rear feel people don't know what it is i'm sure you can hear it through the recording so the rear feel doesn't play mono signal in the dsp you can set it up to only play the stereo recording so it turns into more like an effect speaker it doesn't screw up your front stage it just gives more room information, more ambience in the car, and it feels the car more. You have information coming from the back as well without messing up the front. It's, it, when it's done, once it's done well, it truly makes a big difference. And none of my customers has mentioned yet that, you know, Pete, we don't want it, this is, this is wrong. They, they all say they, they just can't live without it now. So, at the back, we have the Helix DSP.3 running the system. First six channels running the tweeters mid mid bass. Then channel seven running the rear fill in mono. And then channel eight running the sub. Sub JL 13 TW5. Then the XD 700 slash 5. Five channel running the mids and tweeters. And the mono channel runs the rear fill. What we didn't know that the mono channel only plays the 1 kilohertz and it has like a 6 dB slope. So I had to fight with that because you don't get all the detail out of the top end from the rear speakers as you as you want. I still made it work pretty well, but that's a bit of a limitation we were not aware of because the amplifiers were supplied by the owner. The two channel XD 200-2 I think that runs the mid bass up front and then the mono block 600-1 runs the sub. Sub was already mounted in the car before it came to us. It's just the JL sealed prefab box. Nice and punchy, plays down to like 28-ish. Between 30 and, and 60 in the car, it, it works really well. But if you want to check the RT measurements, then, then you have to wait for that a little bit. I will share it later when I have time. But I will show exactly how the system got tuned and how it got together. And if you want to see more tuning videos, then please go to playlist and then click on tuning. You will see many cars tuning videos over there as well. So, and that's the front end. There's the front end where we have Stag, the ST650, I think that's the model, uh, tweeters, 28 mil, sobbed on tweeters. Then you have the MS30, three inch mids, on the pillars and the MSS6 mid base in the doors. And as you can see now, it sounds really echoey. When you sit up front, it doesn't sound like that at all. Let me just shut up. <coughs> Sorry, let me just shut everything. Then we go up front. 
as you could see from previous videos, the car has been soundproof now properly because there wasn't any soundproofing added to the doors. By the way, the, that little red LED light is added to the factory circuit with that white LED. So once I shut it, the lights go off. And of course, the, the floor comes back and everything is hidden. Nothing will be on display. Here we go. Classic beep beep. Well, probably the rear fuel now is a bit louder than it should be, but the owner wanted decent output as well in the car if he wants to go crazy. But we will adjust it with him when he turns up. Whether he wants that level of rear fuel or we can pull it back, it's not an issue. Currently, I'm streaming. Tidal Hi-Fi downloaded uh, into offline mode and it streams to the DSP directly to the hack Bluetooth module. So this way we get the best daily source Ease of use, connect, click play, it goes. Factory head unit works as well on speaker level, but to be honest, it's terrible. People wanted me to show measurements of the factory head unit, how I can get the best out of it. Honestly, there's no point. Stop it. You know, if, if you want to build a good sounding system, forget speaker level integration. Just forget it. You can play with it and kudos to you if you spend shitloads of time or all the magic on the planet to make it sound decent it will sound okay but nothing compared to even just just Bluetooth streaming or you add a digital source on optical a DAP phone with a with the deck anything honestly find a alternative source that has clean unmolested signal and you will be a happy man because from the factory head unit you get front left and right rear left and right and we patched it in so it plays the factory dings dongs rivers all that madness but if you want to play music in good quality then nah it's just it's not good enough for that to mention that we have a Helix URC.3 controller just mounted down there you can only really see the LED light of it uh, it has master level and sub level but the sub level is not needed it's only really needed for two presets we can change between because the car also has a base remote fitted there by the previous shop if you can see it where you can wreck up the sub if you want that's, that's easier to use than the URC34 sub-level controller. Um, and for daily use, that's it. You know, you hit play on the Bluetooth and it, it goes, it plays. You stop it, it goes back to the factory head unit. 
or depending on setting of levels for the factory head unit if you have any notifications or any traffic info coming through then it causes the Bluetooth if you want it like that and then it, it goes back to the factory head unit or you buy a bigger controller like the director and then happy days then you can use that and that has more features we will possibly have a longer demo and first impression with the client when he he can hear the car because now I could I could go through a lot of stuff with you but it is still a phone recording so you take it as seriously as you want it For the feast and the promise of gold But devil, that won't be me One thing we really didn't like with Eddie, this factory head unit just is so aggressive. It just wants to connect to all your devices once you connect it to it. Now I'm connected to the Bluetooth module and iPad cannot be connected to two, two devices simultaneously, but it can still, still see the device and just wants to connect to it. And it screws up so many things. It, it's, it's weird. I haven't seen a factory head unit being so aggressive. Um, it is what it is. I think it just wants you to connect on Apple CarPlay, forget your phone, job done. But if you want to use the head unit for everything and the best music playback, then you need a most connection. Um, we will have to do research on what it requires if it can run most 150. If it can, it can be done, then you can get optical signal out of the head unit, but it's big money. Um, so currently the client didn't have budget for that, and so I don't even think he will need that because the system sounds just great streaming directly to DSP so he should be fine with it for sure just a beautiful place to be in now system works very very well um, you will see from the tuning video I will probably add my first impression to it I just had to record that moment when I listened to a song I know in and out everyone has a favorite genre I wouldn't say that song was my favorite genre but that song is so well produced and it just brought all the emotions out of me I was shivering shaking shouting and everything that's exactly what what you want from a system other than technically correct you want a correct staging everything is up on the dash right in front of you you can separate instruments in the stereo recording you have holographic image of the of the center position so 
you think that you have a centre speaker and a singer is singing to you and, and, and in fact you don't have it but you can still visualise the singer right in front of you in the middle of the sound stage. By the way, the car has a centre speaker and it's not disabled yet, we have to do that. And it's quite funny because it means the previous shops didn't unplug it, they didn't even notice that there was a centre speaker and they were tuning on the top of that, adding everything to it. It's quite laughable, but hey ho. Probably the factory amplification was overpowering everything and they didn't notice the, the centre feel that much, but it's definitely there and it's playing. Oh, stop it. So this is the end of this week, hopefully you like this, this series and you learned a lot from it and there's still more content to come. Um, you will see build pictures in a separate video, you will see all the steps, but to be fair you, you've already seen most of it in the videos and I will bring a, <coughs> sorry, a tuning video as well where I show the RTA results of this car so you have a better understanding of what's really important when it comes to designing a system and fitting speakers in the right locations. So this is where I leave it, please subscribe to the channel, then you can see more proper sound quality content. And please also click on the like button, or if you don't like it, then click on that if you want it. But the more you click on the like button, the more YouTube promotes the content, and then more people will have access to seeing it, otherwise they don't know about this channel. And every day I hear about someone saying, oh I've just come across you Pete, it's crazy that I haven't seen your channel before. And Yes, it would be nice to have hundreds of thousands of followers that would help us even more to, to create more content because at the moment it's a lot of work, a lot of work and, and, I, and I cannot step back and just create video content because I really have to focus on the actual installation. I don't even think I can ever step away from it but that would definitely help if we had more uh, followers on YouTube and YouTube could help us to, to push the business also in that direction. Also check out Patreon guys. If Patreon is new to you, go to description, check out the link to Patreon, which is a subscription-based channel where I, I share a lot of content, behind-the-scene content and in-depth topics. We have weekly topics talking about um, deep stuff, you know, stuff that people don't talk about elsewhere. So it's worth to check that one out as well, where you can learn a lot. And, um, you know, we just try to share as much content as possible. And hopefully in a few days I can bring the next one. So take care for now.
Oh, 